In the spring of 1859, an inventor named Thaddeus Lowe sailed high above the construction site in his new hydrogen-filled balloon called the City of New York, from which he could see the first completed sections of the park. He was stunned by what he saw. Sprawling across 843 acres, 80 times the size of the next largest park in the city, stretched an endless labyrinth of artfully composed vistas and scenes. It was, one man later said, 19th century America's greatest work of art. They think about it kinetically. You move through this space and you have a series of composed views. They're constructing environments that are in the height of unnaturalness because they are man-made environments, but the point is that they feel like they're real, unlike the artifice of the city. You can't underestimate Central Park as a, a vision because it was not built in the middle of what the city was, it was built in the middle of what the city would become. Central Park, instead of having these piddling squares as though New York was a collection of Kensington-like neighborhoods in London, we would have one huge 840-acre, no small piece of land, big pleasure ground for the city. The park would not be a landscaped, uh, formal thing in the French tradition, but would be a kind of piece of captured nature. Entering at Fifth Avenue and 59th Street, visitors were led slowly out of the city along an elegant tree-lined mall, a street of nature, skewed away from the city's rigid street plan and penetrating ever deeper into the interior of the park. At the far northern end of the mall, the scene suddenly widened to reveal a breathtaking view. Stretching as far as the eye could see, the park gave the illusion that the open space went on, perhaps forever. An image of the unspoiled continent America itself had once been, now transformed into an urban paradise and permanently preserved. <laughs> 